What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Well, we're back out of Benny's shed. We're gonna tackle a little bit on the GMC before it gets super hot. We'll see how we go. We'll catch you after the intro. Well, that's not good. So, I am just trying to come to terms with what I left this in, so where I'm up to. Um, I think from memory, yeah, I already put a light up there, but I've got to bar this over to top dead centre so I can pull the injector pump out because that's attached to the timing case cover, which has to come off, so I've got to pull Top dead center, harmonic balancer off, injector pump out, timing case cover off. Um, and then I've got to undo, I've got to take the timing gears and timing chain off. The cam stays in the block. So the center gear there comes off, but the cam stays. Um, top gear is the injector pump. And then we can finally start, I pull the oil pump out of it, and then we can finally start undoing the main caps and pulling the crank out of it. Uh, Benny's off helping one of our mates sheet his shed before the heat of the day comes, but it's a coming, and coming fucking quick. It's already 9 o'clock because we've been sort of procrastinating and whatnot. He's uh, got a bit of a quad graveyard here. I've got to wire this one up to this weekend and get it running. Uh, he bought this, what is it, a, I think it's a 600 or a 400 Kodiak. He bought it crashed. So that's the front end off it. You can see it's pretty twisted. Then he got this burnt 660 Grizzly and he's done a front cut. So he's just sort of mocking up the front end, getting the geometry right. Um, but before he goes too far ahead, he wants me to get it running before he starts, you know, putting the actual tubes, the proper tubes in there and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, someone hacked the harness. It supposedly was running before it hit a tree at 80 kilometers an hour and fucking bent it in half so we're picking we're getting another quad dropped off which is similar lineage to this i think it's the same one as this i don't know um to potentially rob the wire and harness out of because this one does some weird stuff it doesn't have any triggers for the starter motor solenoid and As soon as you hook the power up, it's cranking immediately. So I'm trying to work out what the mess is there. But, GMC first. Quads later, GMC first. <laughs> this tire's flat and it's actually blown out. Ben does seven on seven off, so he hasn't been home much. So this thing's just been sitting on the hoist. We come into the shed and it's like, oh, that fuck tire's flat and it's all delaminated. I was like, oh, I'm sure someone would have heard that go pop. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and bar this big old fucking lump of iron over to TDC. It's close. The TDC marks here on the harmonic balancer, and it's got to go around to there. But, uh, <laughs> so I've got to come up with another plan. Uh, yeah, I'm... Um, Give me a minute. All right, day two. I'll tell you what, didn't get much done on this thing yesterday, which is pretty annoying. It pretty much is exactly the same, other than the fact it's over on top dead center, and uh, it's about ready to pull the harmonic balancer off. But we couldn't find that, so we had to go to Ben's dad's and pick it up, which is nothing major. Um, and then I had about fifteen phone calls to do with work, uh, so that just stopped everything and then it was too hot to work in the shed it was like 38 or 40 degrees yesterday so while well, it was too hot we worked on some other stuff mainly Ben's new quad so he bought this 400 Kodiak pretzel that it hit a tree so at like 80 k's an hour there's the front end and there's part of what's left of the front end um, so his idea was to front cut it 
and put it back together pretty much. So you've got this 660 Grizzly that have been burnt and front cut it and put this front end on. It's a lot taller and wider. So nothing lined up pretty much. Like you can see he's been playing here trying to get it to line up. So one of our mates picked up a 300 Bruin. That's the tank plastic there, yeah, Bruin. I've never heard of it. Um, the frame's the same. It's just air-cooled solid axle instead of water-cooled. Um, so we cut the entire front end off of that. We've used, so we've seamed it there. It's sleeved and plug welded and welded around. So I've used everything forward. So bars, the whole lot, dashboard, tank, tank plastics, front plastics. Um, we used the crash bikes, diff center and CBs because the Bruin was a two wheel drive. And now he's, his bike's done. It took a fair bit of convincing on my part to convince him to cut the bike back apart to put the other front end on and now we've done it he's like it's a fucking great idea that's exactly what i wanted it's a stock bike again so and it works we'll see if it wants to start it's it's been sitting for a long time so it's a little temperamental oh there's no key in it <laughs> now it runs he's worried about people stealing it yeah it's a little fight fiddly so we've got to we've just got to put it in the river and just ride the fuck out of it so <sighs> while everyone's still asleep and before it gets super hot, which hopefully will hold off today because it's a bit cloudy, um, I'm going to work on the gym too. So I've got to get the harmonic balance, still get the harmonic balancer off, injector pump out, timing case cover off, so we can start pulling the crank out of this fucking thing. All the stuff I wanted to do yesterday, I've got to do today. But <sighs> that's work, I guess. Absolute pain in my ass. Anywho, I'm going to. Rip that big goyle off. We've got to go and find the bolts for the puller. And then, um, yeah, pull the pump out of it and have fun. It shouldn't. I'm too proud of a fly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Land on your shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> it's wiggling. Third time's a charm for working on the GMC, hopefully. We'll try this again. So I've got basically nothing done again. <laughs> Talk about busy. Well, yeah, I got the timing gear off. And then I went to find a spanner, 30 mil spanner, like that one off, sat there now. Pulled the injector pump off, couldn't find that. And then uh, we just got busy, you know, drinking. Some bloke locks cart and dry, apparently. <laughs> Drinking and riding. And we had to test out Benny's new quad. Knocked up a cheeky seat cover out of an old welding blanket for it because of the seat pan. We only got the seat pan. There was no phone, so I had to cut phone. Out. Yeah, it was a whole whole thing. Anyway, his bike's done. Loves it. Over the moon. So I've got to go home today, but I'm going to do a little bit of... A little bit of work on this rig. We're still going to go and pick up the ute, actually. We left it over our mate's place when we towed the hot quads over there because we were riding and drinking, so I couldn't drive it home. But I'm going to undo the injector pump now, get that out, get the timing case cover off, get the timing chain off it. <sighs> yeah. Oh, God. This place just eats time. <laughs> It'll be right. It'll be right. I guess I'll get to it. Anywho, I'm going to start undoing this injector pump. It's held in by two bolts. you got to pull the injector pump because it's bolted to the timing case cover, which has to come off. So, yeah, that's why I had to put it on top dead center. And there is some timing marks. There we go. Little dot, dot to dot on the cam gear. Pull the injector pump gear to the cam gear. 
So the cam's run by a chain off the crank, and then the pump's run by a gear off the cam. No wonder they stretch timing chains, eh? But, yeah. I'll uh, let this pump out. All right, that's all off. It uh, wasn't too bad to get off. Just sat the injector pump in the valley because uh, it doesn't need to come all the way off. I can't be bothered disconnecting the kick down cable and throttle cable. But here's the timing case cover and gears. So now, uh, take the light out from underneath the bonnet and uh, drop the bonnet down because it doesn't clear the roof. And we'll start undoing fucking bottom end bolts. Yep, get this thing out. Well, there we have it, crank out. I'll have a torch and have a look at my lamp here. Yeah. yeah, nice. Cam looks all good. Um, and it only damaged that one rod. Cylinder 7 rod, so... I uh, should be able to put this thing back together. But that won't be today, because I've got to go out. <laughs> so I'm going to pack some tools up and then head out. Well, after almost 12 years, time to call it quits on still engineering and have a go and do my own thing. So, today's my last day after a four month notice. They give me a nice little, nice couple and grab. That was pretty cool. So, I'm gonna fly into doing a bit of maintenance for myself. But, yeah, it's a long time. Well, we'll see what the future holds. Right. We're back at Benny and G's house to work on the GMC again. It's actually been a couple of weeks since the footage you've seen just before. Had a bit going on. If you follow my social media, you'll know what's happened. I quit my job and started my own business. So, I've been pretty busy. Um, yeah, so I've got all the pistons out. Number seven, that was the one we had to change the rod on. Um, I just tried a couple of barons out of the the ones I brought up out of the parts motor in the existing rods and they all clip in so the rods are good um, which is good and that's swapped over so I just went and picked up a jug of diesel found an old Milo tin and we are going to get set up and ready to claw hone out these bores because you're not supposed to see the reflection of the phone as I'm videoing it in the bore so the bores are glazed it's, it's done a lot of idling so that's not typically what happens the rings are good though no bad damage to the rings or anything um, so they'll be fine to run again uh, the one thing I did notice is cylinder 7 the one with the bad rod you can actually see it's been tapping the head a bit that's also a mark from the valve so that's that head that hole actually so um, I'll flip that head over and I'll CC the chamber basically, so I'll tip some um, alcohol into the chamber and make sure I don't have a bent valve because that's been hitting it. The way the impression in the top of the piston, I think it's just been hitting it because that valve's proud. Um, I don't actually think it's bent, but I'm gonna check it while I'm there because if it's bent a valve, I'll just put a valve in it, whatever. So yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I showed you the old crank out of it. That's the dead rod on the dead crank. Big score marks. Big score marks. So maybe I'll make a lamp out of it. Yeah. So I just uh, I'll have to. Uh, I think I got the blocks leaning back too far to get to the rear cylinders to hone. So I'm I'm gonna have to jack the block up um, just to get it a bit squarer. And I'll start <laughs> fucking hone this bore out. Eight holes. It's gonna take fucking forever. I've also got to clean out this tin because I think it might be Ben's oil drip tin out of his barbecue, but whatever. Yeah. So, I'm going to clean that, get a floor jack under that engine, get it square, and um, we'll start honing. And then I can slap the crank in it, 
drop the pistons back in it, stone the head and the block. I got I got the um, I got Jimmy's kitchen stone we used on the 3RZ, and he also said grab the Heimler, the same stuff we used on his 3RZ to reseal it. That's actually really good. Since we've done Jimmy's dra actual official drag car, I got teched last weekend for nine seconds. Um, since we've resealed his with Heimler and I stoned the block and the head, doesn't lift the head, doesn't push water, nothing, it's perfect. So as I'm not going to be decking the heads because I've pulled them off, I'm just going to Heimler it and go from there. Anyway, I'm, yab I'm yabbering on now a bit, so I'm going to start doing a bit. All right, so we've got it all honed out. We've got picked up some nice cross hatching in the ball. There's a little bit of ring ridge in it. Um, nothing I'm going to do about that. It'll be all right. It's not real heavy. You can see it like it's got a witness mark. Um, so I'm ready to clean it up and start putting it back together. I uh, stained all the deck of the block off as well while I was there. Figured if I got to clean the block, I might as well do everything all at the same time. Um, yeah, so that's it all stained off. I couldn't get that fucking dowel out of there, unfortunately, which is a bit of a pain, but it came up pretty good. It's relatively flat. I could stain it more, but I'm high malar in it anyway, and high malar takes up 0.2 of a, of a millimetre of variance, so that's a Big chunk. Anywho, had, a, had to go down the road and get a whole bunch of brake clean so I can clean off this block and I can start putting the bearings in it for the mains and swing this crank into it, which is up there. Fuck. Shit. Alright, back underneath it, you can actually see cross action come up really nice it was super quick to knock out actually so and yeah no more glazing so it didn't didn't actually need too much to knock the glazing out of it which was good uh, so yeah now I'll just hose all that down with contact cleaner and then we'll uh, let it back down get the crank out of it clean all the shit off the crank because I covered it in uh, soft seal and then we can start getting her in yeah Well, just under here cleaning everything up. Yep, getting it ready and crack and big crack and crack and crack. So what causes that is when you're rebuilding an engine and you've got oil and grease down in the bottom of the hole and you torque them, it's got nowhere for the oil and grease to come out it hydraulically cracks the fucking block, which is exactly what's happened here. I did notice when I pulled one of the rod bolts out, it was fractured. There we go. You see that? The end of it's fractured off. I was like, oh, that's weird. Maybe they over torqued it and it broke or they reused the cap, main cap bolts. No, it cracked off because they had shit in the bottom of the block. So that block's junk. Fuck. That's so much work I've put into that for no reason. Maybe I should have cleaned it off before I started playing with it, but I didn't anticipate. Three of the five main cap in the block to be cracked through. That's fucking super shit. Hmm. Mm -mm. Can't. Can't. <sighs> Now what do I do? Uh, I guess I've got, to re I've got to build that other block. I've got no two ways about it. I'll have to fix um, the boss on the side of the starter motor, or for the starter motor. Remember that other block's got this part of the block broken off it. So I'll have to repair that. Um, I guess I'll put all my good bits on that one. Oh wow, fuck. Man, that's so bad. Man, that's a huge crack. Look how far up it goes. I'll try and get some light in there. But, but, but all the way up into the cam bucket gallery. 
Wow. All right, so, would you believe it? It's been nearly a month, actually it's been over a month since that last segment you've seen. Uh, Gene's still, still there. And I haven't had time to work on it since the 20th of March. I've been home two days. And I'm supposed to be going home today for two days, then come back for two days work. And then Benny, who owns his big F truck here, me and him are flying to, hmm, it's a, it's a, it's a town in Queensland that starts with a T on the coast. Can't remember. Flying there Monday, because he just bought an F-250. And we're flying up, picking it up and driving it back. Um, he's very heavily pregnant wife wants to come but he's uh he doesn't think it's a good idea because she's like seven or eight months pregnant <laughs> so he's dragging me along and we're gonna fly up 70 hours worth of flying with the stopovers and that and then it's 17 and a half hours drive time back we get there at get to the airport at two o'clock monday afternoon old mate picks us up it's an hour drive from the airport to his house Get in the effie, cannonball it back. That's Monday, and we're supposed to start work Wednesday back out at Cobar, so sick. It's gonna be busy. But we're thinking about filming a bit of YouTube stuff with that because we don't it's an unknown truck. Neither of us have dealt with it before. It doesn't have the power stroke, it's got the 4.2 um, inline six. He wanted the truck motor, not the power stroke. Makes a little less power, run forever. Sacrifices. But anyway, I'm down here filming a bit on the GMC because some parts are turned up and Benny's lovely wife G was so kind to pick them up for me from the post office even though it was dramatically heavy. Um, LMC truck, that's an American company so I ordered these bits before I worked out the block was fucked in the GMC otherwise I probably would have focused on the engine block. So, oop, just put it in there. We've got a replacement passenger side indicator parker because that one in there is fucked. They're a sealed unit, you can't just buy a lens and my lens is fucked. We've got replacement factory floor mats because the carpet in that is pretty ratty, mainly in the floor area, like where you put your feet, so that'll cover that up. The carpet kit was exuberantly expensive, so I didn't buy that. And because I've got some banged up tail light lenses, this will take a bit of unpacking, so we'll go and do it on the tailgate here. That one's got a hole in it. And I think this one's cracked as well, somewhere. I don't know, I just bought a pair, probably only needed one. But if you're only gonna do one lens, it'll look funny because these are brand, brand new. Man. They even come with the bolt kit. So it's got a new backing, the whole lot, because I think when I had this one open, the backing's actually punched out of it too. So, and the chrome trim around it. That's an extra because this is a Sierra Classic. It's got all the chrome trimmings, so had to get the lens with the chrome trim. Apparently the chrome trim does come off. Uh, so I probably could have recycled it off of there because you can just get the plain lenses and then put the Sierra Classic or the chrome trimming around it. So that's nice. And <clears throat> I bought, they make full as per factory, seat, seat replacement covers. So, that's the red velour and vinyl that was on at factory. We'll take it, we'll take it in. We'll sit it next to it and see if it's the same pattern. Um, you, t you saw the search by year model and trim, trim color and trim tag. So, I did ponder about, because it's, you know, burgundy on the outside and burgundy on the inside. It's like, well, maybe I'll just black it out. I'll go, so I've got to redo the hood lining already. Um, maybe I'll just go to, you know. Uh, maybe it was the brown seat and I've got a red seat. Well, fuck it, it's red now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, because this is fucked. So this was the velour seat, you, the crown classic deluxe or whatever the fuck this thing is out of a law seat 
Um, so I just went back with the factory again. Um, but in that year model, they didn't have an option for a brown seat. Is that not the factory seat? It is an import. Do you go on LMC truck and you search by year model and trim, like varied, I guess you would call it, GMC, C1500, 82, um, and it comes up with the drop down for all the trim interior colors. Like you can even get the door cards in that. But these are all red too, and so is the lower carpet. I've got the trim piece that does go there to cover that. I'll have to just re-glue that. So maybe that's not the original seat because it's also not the right pattern because this is the pattern that it's supposed to have. Horizontal ladder bars, not vertical. Well, does it have horizontal in the backrest? No, they're all vertical. Okay, that must be the original seat because according to LMC truck, this is the fucking seat cover that's supposed to be in the car. But anyway... Yeah, because it was already pretty ratty, it's like I could black the interior out, um, spray the bottom of the dash black, I could vinyl paint these black, do the carpet black, I'd have to do the car redo the carpet, which was $600 US for the carpet kit, do the hood line in black, it was like, it's already mostly red, maybe I'll just fucking buy a red one. So, that's what I did. So yeah, that just goes on as per factory onto the seat frame. So... I'm going to have a go out put some parts on this old rig because I haven't had time to even pick my spare engine block up, let alone start building it. So this thing is exactly how it was oh, 36 days ago. <laughs> Not that you can see much in there. Um, that block's got to come out. Of that stuff, so. Yeah, I haven't done anything. That's my new quad though. We're, we're, we're mad quad riders now dope sicky sicky dope um it's an atp 500 polaris atp all terrain pickup because it's got a tub on the back and it's a tipper <laughs> so that whole thing tips but it's a 500 it fucking rips i got it super cheap because a bunch of stuff wasn't working it was missing the speedo cluster and it's all tied into that i done a bit of a work around to get it working and then i bought a replacement speedo so a bunch of parts sitting here for this. But unfortunately, I have grenaded the transfer case. It sits there normally, right there. Yep. Um, turns out transfer cases need oil. And they super don't like when you don't run them without oil. So I bought a bearing kit and everything. I bought, took the transfer case home with me there last my last break, fucking four weeks ago. Um, left the bearing kit here so I couldn't build it. And then proceeded to explode one of the gears in the transfer case, pressing it off the shaft. That is an $800 gear. So now I'm trying to find just a replacement transfer case. So it sits there now. <laughs> and then that's the Hawkeye 300 that my brother picked up, fixed, sold to Ben. Ben rolled it, broke it. We've kind of fixed it. It was running and now it's doing some weird stuff. So we'll look at that later. Um, I'm thinking about. My mate's got a Magnum, which is the same transfer case. It's got a flat cam in it because this generation did eat cams. I'm thinking about buying the Magnum off him for the transfer case. Then there's another bloke in town. So Polaris done some weird stuff. They're all pretty much the same from there forward. So you had the 500 Sportsman, the 500 Magnum, and the 500 ATP. All the same engine, all the same front drive setup. The Sportsman had a funny hydraulic, hydrostat clutch set up on the hubs. Um, these are just pretty much constant four drive. So the Sportsman's independent front and rear, the ATP and the Magnum, a swing arm with a transfer case, the Sportsman's independent set up, the gearbox is built into it. So as if I buy Burger's Magnum, pinch the transfer case for that, out of that for this, to put my farm quad back together, even though it fucking hammers, this thing does like 110. Um, then I go get the IFS Sportsman rear end off of Stewie's wrecked bike, and put it in the back of the Magnum, thus making it a sportsman, good running bike, nothing wrong with it, and fuck her off. I get my transfer case for way less than it's gonna cost me to buy the gears, and then I can sell the Magnum, now sportsman, for you know a couple grand. So the transfer case for this will actually make me money. I'm I'm feeling still feeling that sort of idea out, you know? Mm, seeing if it fits, like an old comfy jacket. I don't have time to do any of that though. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Uh, I was going to pull the seed out of this, but that's on jack stands. To get the transfer case out of that, you've got to pull the swing arm out. And I don't feel like moving it. So... No seed. Let's do the lights. Setting out the 91. Yep. Right hand unit with chrome trim. I like that fence. Mm, I'm all about it. Chrome will get you home, they say. There's a Phillips head. There's my glorious lens. The amount of these that are in Australia are very difficult to buy parts for in Australia. Fucking hell. I um, did not anticipate that. That's why I just went straight down and said, truck. In the States, unfortunately, the part you're looking at is a thousand dollars. That's with shipping on that. You know, it's all up. Lens was a thousand bucks. Two tail light lenses, front indicator lens. I needed a left hand one as well, but they're out of stock. So I've got to wait for that. And the seat kit, seat color. I couldn't. People were asking fucking 800 bucks for ratty seats. I thought about just changing the whole seat out. Um, none of them were close. They were all the wrong colour. All had different gear models too. I didn't know different gear models were going to fit. So I just decided to. Very, oh, I guess the chrome, chrome trim does come off. You sort of flare that out and pop it off the lens. Well, that's good to know. But I think the tail light lens with the chrome trim was the same for us anyway, so I don't think it matters. <laughs> okay, now I've got to get all that out. My ultimate plan, this thing had some gaudy, I don't know if you remember. What did I show it in the videos? I can't remember. It had like trailer fucking lights there for the indicators. They're gone. So that little square down the bottom there, that's a reverse light. But my plan is, I'll French a set of sunken LED lights in there for the reverse lights, because I've already got holes in the bar, so what does it fucking matter? Put an orange bulb in there, and that's now my indicator. That's what I'm thinking. Hopefully, I can get it through a blue slip like that. Because I fucking hate extra tail lights that aren't factory, they look disgusting. So, that's, that's what I'm feeling. That'll be, that's an up indicator, isn't it? Doesn't have to be an up indicator. Does it have a side marker? No. I could maybe put a side marker indicator in it. Like what the ZH has got in the arse end of it. All right, so I've just got it all cleaned up, cleaned up the gasket surface, the bulb carries and all that. And now, you know, typically with any old truck, especially one that's been you know, right hand, left hand converted and had a bunch of wiring work done, there's some funny wiring going on. Who would have guessed? Not me. Yeah. Um, so you look at the tail light bucket there. It's obviously got reverse there. Tail. And I'm assuming tail brake. And I'm assuming that little one on the side was indicated because you've got that hash part there. Um, so instead of just doing the right thing when they'd done the conversion, I would have made that just tail, tail, and then the center. That one light up as brake light. So that one's red, red, and then that one lights up as brake light. They just cut it off. There we go. Um, and then just scotch locked it into that. Um, and then run the indicator wiring down to the, there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put it in because I don't have any way of remedying it because they're those funny little rubber lancing bulb things which are the same as the quarter marker bulbs and front indicator bulbs on the fair lane. You can get them from super cheap. We're in a small country town, there ain't no super cheap here. So, and put these in even though they've got to come back out because I just want to make sure they look all right, okay? Well, fucking don't judge me here, right? I spent a lot of money on parts and they're fucking going in. So, I'm going to fit these even though they've got to come back out to, yeah, stuff. But that's all right, you know. All right, we've got the tail light housing mounted, time for the lens. Now they did supply me 
with individually packets, packeted screws, which are Phillips head, and they're zinc, they're nice, but the ones that come out of it are stainless, paper proof screws. So I'm going to probably run the original back into it. And you know, when it comes back off, I'll give them a little buff on the wire brush to shine them up a little bit. Yeah. Um, this fucking is good already, I'll tell you. Now, I probably won't be able to show you what illuminated it. Because, uh, the fucking engine base of the car's in place. We'll see how we go. Oh, this is fine. Love. Oh, this is so good. My ultimate plan was to have one of my vehicles running as a sidecar now that I'm working for myself. Uh, it was going to be a GMC, but uh, you know, life happens and I wanted to start my job a bit quicker than this thing being done. So, my other plan was to get Sarge, Rego, and done, and a local glass mob where I live. So they get they can get glass, they got three in Sydney, can't get a rubber. So I fucked around and I organised a rubber. We've got multiple boxes, so I'll just pick the best of the bad bunch pretty much. Um run to get all of that screening. Um I've got a rubber, let me know when it's here. It's been two months. We're not running them, nah, still not here. So I was driving my mate's Falcon. You might have seen it in the background here, this is the VA Falcon. Filmed from Cobar, and a week and a half ago, driving out to Cobar, I hit a kangaroo in it, so I've now had to buy that. <laughs> so, the VA Falcon's the Cobar guy. I'll, uh, I'll flick some photos up of what the kangaroo did and what I did to drive it for seven days. <laughs> Oof, fuck, oh, Jesus, look at that. I don't know what's going on here with the chrome because the old lens wasn't like that, so. Yeah, I don't know if they've just fitted it funny. So I might pull the lens back off and give that a bit of a bit of a teasing right there where you see where it puckers out and there's a dent there. Now, if they're in Australia, I'll probably just return that, but they're in America and they took fucking three weeks to get here, so I'm not fucking, I'll just fix it, all right, I'll just, I'll just fucking fix it, so now, let's do that side, and imagine that bright work all fucking shined up, I ain't gonna do anything about that, um, the corner stripping's going back on it, the side stripping's going back on it, because she's a Sierra classic, mate, she's gotta look good, so, you shine that up, I'll repaint the black line around it, there. Oh, and then the corner bit will be shined up. Oh my god, it's like that looks so good. On to the other side. Now, on to doing the other side, and I wasn't going to bother filming this side because you just watched me put the other side in. So, but, but I noticed something interesting that they didn't do to the other side, but under this side. They hacked the fucking housing out so that bulb would illuminate this side of the tail light when there's a fucking bulb right there. They, they cut up a lovely little bit of plastic and glued it in there. You had a bulb there. But now they hacked that out so it would illuminate the side of the tail light. Wouldn't it be, you know, amazing if someone designed it with a fucking bulb there already? <laughs> Man. That's fucking... Uh, I don't know. Yep. I guess these... Well, when they were converting them, they just wanted to get them in and get them out, so... Upper with the fucking with the drill bit and the file there, bud, and just fucking make it work, eh? Let's go. Good thing that's going. Oh yeah. All right, I got it off in one bit, and we got it straightened out. They're um actually pretty soft. I wouldn't say aluminium; they're more like zinc. They actually bend real easy. You just sort of flare the tab out, she slides off. So I could have bought just the plain lens, and then pulled these off of mine, but I would have had to polish them. To make them matchy matchy, so I'm going to try and put this back on without destroying it or bending it like they did. 
that's looking pretty straight now and it's not flared out anymore it's pretty square this side had a bit of a pucker in it too but it's gone so yeah we'll put that back on there maybe no nah, it's more like that yep but on the other side I think it goes, yeah, it goes like that. Big side, little side. And I've just got to like tease that over the top, I think. Nice and gentle like. Yep, that's exactly what I have to do. And then it pops over the edge when it's not bent. There we go. Radius. Okay, now we gently tease this without bending everything. Yep, that's how easy it is to bend, so it must be a zinc, not an aluminium. Nice. In here. Fucking around. No, I haven't had any. Well, eyes bigger than your stomach, you say? Hey? Eyes bigger than your stomach, you say? Yeah, I had one tender and I was like, oh. There we have it all shined up. Pretty. And that's all squared up now so it doesn't fucking poke out. Flush. Yeah. Shut down to work with Ben at a dog food factory here in Dubbo. Get one day off, fly to Queensland, get the F 250, come back. Midday Tuesday, and then immediately drive to work Monday or Wednesday morning to, to start work that day. So, three hour drive to Cobar, Wednesday morning before work. I'll be leaving here at like three something in the morning. That's alright, we'll get around. I don't have to drive because Ben's driving his new truck. We left the BA that I just bought off him after I stuffed it into a kangaroo out there, so we're good to go. It's probably a good thing I didn't drive Big Booty Judy at Cobar, because I would have still hit that kangaroo. I've already ripped the lip off again. That was another kangaroo, because I did have to drive this out to Cobar a while ago. So, yeah. BAs are replaceable. It's old rigged. BA Falcon. Fun. Anyway, that'll probably do it for this video. It's been going on for a month and a bit now, with whatever. I've got to get home. It's the day before Anzac Day. I've got to pick a new pulley up for Ben's golf cart for the place that I used to work for, Complete Industrial. Hopefully tonight or this afternoon before they shut. Also, got to pull out nine grand for him because the most he can pull out in the day is nine, so I've got to pull out the rest, so we've got the, enough money to buy the car when we get to Queensland. So I've got to get to a bank and complete before they shut today, and then have a day off tomorrow, maybe sit around, play some video games. We'll see. It won't happen. I'll be working on something. Anyway, you guys have fun. We'll catch you in the next round, which will probably be road trip to Queensland to get this journey called F-250. Yep.